This is Izzy Elimu. I'm Vincent Kanumwai. I'll be your teacher for today. I'm going to take you through Form 4 Mathematics. Stay tuned. Welcome. Today we are going to learn about these longitudes and latitudes. And we shall start here by viewing on great and small circles. From these two diagrams, we have to identify from diagram A and B what are small circles and what are great circles. For instance, on viewing this diagram, we can find that this circle here, which is passing through here, you find that it is longer than the other circles which are on the upper side and on the lower side. At the same, we can find that here, the, all the circles passing through this one, the lines which are passing from the North Pole to the South, from up to down, and they are passing the other direction, that is a circle, a complete circle, they are all equal. Here is only one which is big and the other one are small. And from this we can deduce that the circle which passes through a given sphere, taking this one to be a sphere, the circle which cuts a given sphere into two hemispheres, two equal hemispheres is known as a great circle. For instance, we can view here that this circle here it will cut this given sphere into two equal parts, making it to have the lower hemisphere cutting from this part and the upper hemisphere cutting from that part to give us... It will give you us two spheres which will be in such a form. The, this this has two spheres which are in equal one up and one down. Such a line that casts a given sphere into two equal parts is known as a great circle. Same applies to this. The circles which are drawn on this sphere are cutting it into two equal parts, meaning that any given circle on diagram B cuts the sphere into two equal parts, and this qualifies these all circles to be great circles. On the other hand, we find that after this only given circle, we find that the other circles which are above and lower the given great circle cuts the sphere into different parts. They are known as the small circle. Reason being that they don't cut the given sphere into two equal parts. It makes something of a chord. So we can finalize say that the great circles divides a given sphere into two equal parts, while the small circles does not. So take two diagram to be our art, known as this art. So we can deduce that the given here circle, which cuts the, the given sphere into two equal parts, shall be known as equator, because it given earth, which is, no, is taken to be a perfect sphere, into two equal parts, making it to have two equal hemispheres. Thus, the equator is also a great circle. And in most ca cases, all the given small circles which arise, any circle which is apart from the equator, either on the above or down of the equator, will now be having a small deviation in degrees from the given circle. So, with that deduced, it will take us to another subtopic of the great and small circles. From the given diagram A, we have seen that having this, having this as our earth, which is taken to be a perfect sphere, we have found that a given circle which cuts it into two equal parts is taken to be equator. And we have said this equator is 
normally a great circle because it can cut into two equal parts. Apart from the equator, we have other small circles may run either above or lower than that equator. Those are the small circles. And as you view very well, you will find that this earth, it normally has an axis which passes through its center. That axis, it is taken to be where the earth rotates as it revolves around the sun. It rotates in itself as it revolves around the sun. So, any plane which, if this one is the equator, you will find that it will pass through this one and then it will make something like a circle. So, if it makes a circle, we will find that the plane made, which is a circle, it is perpendicular to the given axis. And that one we can say that a latitude is any circle of which we can find here, any line which its plane is perpendicular to the Earth's axis. As we have seen, for example, this one having being the equator, we have seen its plane, a plane is something like if we have a circle this way, now take if we cut from here this one, we only take this one and then we make it to view in this direction. We will find that this one will be a plane. I'm, I'm talking about this part. The shaded part is now this shaded part. Now we are finding that this shaded part is a plane. And if you view, you will find the axis is passing through here. This axis is passing through this point, which is this one. And we are seeing that on this one, if you measure this angle of this plane, for example, if this one is the radius of that plane, then we shall find this one is perpendicular. The same applies if this one is a small circle. You will find that if you measure the distance, the angle between that one you will find is 90 degrees. Meaning that any plane that makes a perpendicular, which is perpendicular to the Earth's axis, we now deduce one to be a latitude. We shall look about another one which is longitude. And from the view of the second diagram, which was B, we saw some lines running from the North Pole to the South Pole. So, having a diagram as that one, being our perfect sphere, which is the Earth, which is taken to be as a perfect sphere, we can deduce that this is the North Pole, and this one is the South Pole. We have of the circles running from the North Pole, which may be P, to Q, which is South Pole, and we have some circles which are running from North Pole to South Pole, and it goes around that way. We have found those all circles that run from North Pole to the South Pole of the Earth are referred to as the longitudes. The structure runs from the North Pole to the South Pole of the Earth are referred to as longitudes. This circle, we have one of it which passes through the Greenwich town in London. And that, one, uh, that circle is referred to as Greenwich Meridian or known as the Prime Meridian. The other name for longitudes then can be referred to as the Meridian. So we have deduced, for example, this one being the circle. If we take this one to be the Prime Circle, we shall say it is our prime meridian. And it is given that name because it runs from the North Pole to the South Pole through a town in London which is known as Greenwich Town. So it was given that name Greenwich Meridian. And we deduce that any of the circle which runs from the North to the South 
is measured with reference to this Greenwich meridian. Therefore, this Greenwich meridian is always taken to be 0 degrees. And we can deduce that any of the longitude which are either on the west of the Greenwich and east of the Greenwich are always measured with the reference to the prime meridian. Those which are on the east of the Greenwich are given degrees with the reference to the prime meridian but with east. For example, let's take for example this one. If we need this prime meridian, it is measured from the earth center. Taking this one to be our great circle, which is the equator, its plane also gives us much more information here. So, from the center of the earth here to this one, it is always zero. So, this is our reference. But if you need to measure this one, we measure it with the, from the center of the earth with the perpendicular plane. Now, to give this one, you will measure from the center of the earth with the reference to the prime meridian and then to that circle, to that longitude. Then, if you find the degree from the center of the earth to that longitude, it will be the name of that longitude. For instance, if this one is 15 degrees with the reference to the prime meridian, then we can say that this meridian, it will be 15 degrees east of Greenwich Meridian. So, that 15 degrees east is the name of the meridian or the longitude which is located as prime meridian. The same applies to the other meridian. For example, if this one, let's take for instance, this meridian is 20 degrees. If we measure from this direction to that one and we find that with the reference with the reference to the prime meridian from that center of the earth, with the reference to prime meridian to that given longitude, we find that this longitude, for example, is at 20 degrees. Then it means that this meridian will be 20 degrees west of the prime meridian. And that's the name given to that meridian. I would like us also to pass through another subtopic, and that is position of a place on the earth. Here, we need to see how we can give a position of a place on earth's surface with regard to longitudes and latitudes. We have already seen what are longitudes and what are latitudes. Here, we shall see how can we locate a given place using longitudes and latitudes. And we can say that having this as a sphere, we have a great circle and also some small circles. And we have here a prime, our prime meridian. Let it be PQ. This is our earth. For, for instance, then this is our earth. We have some meridians passing this way. With the reference to the prime meridian, this meridian with zero degrees simplifies that this is the prime meridian or what we refer to as Greenwich Meridian. And then this other great circle here with the zero degrees is referred to as the latitude which is equator. And the other ones are the small circles but they are also latitudes with the given degrees from the equator. Now, we can see that latitudes are all 
make reference to the great circle which is the equator here. And then the longitudes are always measured with reference to the prime meridian. We have seen that. But we can on either of the places at. For instance, you can be asked if this one, for example, let's say this one is Djibout. If that one is Djibout and you are being asked to locate the place of that Djibout, what shall we do? The first thing we should know that we can locate a given place using latitude and longitude. And any given place on the Earth's surface is identified by a pair of you are being given a pair of latitude then longitude. What is first identified is the latitude and then the given next type thing is the longitude. For instance, let's say example this hour here this small circle passing here, let it, let it be 10 degrees north of equator. They are always measured with reference to equator, but their maximum measurement should be 90 degrees up to this point. If we have small circles, small circles moving that way, we will find the greatest they can move is up to 90 degrees north of the equator, and also 90 degrees up to south of the equator. And the prime meridian, they can only move, either they move to the east, 180 degrees of them, east of the prime meridian, and also 180 degrees west of the prime meridian, meaning that the maximum meridian we can find is either 180 degrees east or west and for the latitude is 90 degrees north or south so given the the position of a place on the earth surface we shall find we will have for example Djibouti we say this one to be 10 degrees north and then we say if this one is passing here let this one be 15 degrees east because this is the prime meridian, but if we measure it with the reference to the prime meridian from the earth center, we shall find that this one is on 15 degrees east, and then let's say, for example, this one be the distance from the degrees from here to that one, let that one be 30 degrees east. We shall find that this longitude passing through here is 30 degrees east. So we can deduce that this place here, given place here, it is on the 10 degrees north latitude, which is east. It is on north of the equator, so it is 10 degrees north. You put a comma. And then, it is on which longitude? It is on 30 degrees east. So, we can say that Djibouti, our given Djibouti here, is on 10 degrees north, 30 degrees east. For any given person to identify the place, we'll only use the longitude and latitude and find the place of that part. For instance, having that one, we have said how we can find. Uh, we have said the maximum measurement of the latitudes, they can only reach a maximum of 90 degrees either north or south of the equator, and also the meridians can only reach either 180 degrees east of the equator uh, of the prime meridian or 180 degrees west of the prime meridian. So, meaning that the maximum number of latitude we have on the earth surface are 180, and the maximum number of meridians we have on the Earth's surface are 360 meridians. Let's see, for instance, we have seen that one, and then we can have another one here.
you can be asked to find the difference between the latitudes and also the difference between the longitudes. For instance, being given a circle or the earth as that part, then we have a great circle passing which is zero degrees, but you find that we have one of the longitude uh, of the latitude, I mean, passing there and it is 30 degrees north of the equator and another latitude passing through that point and it is 20 degrees south of the equator and you be asked to find the difference find the difference between the two latitudes for instance this one we can only find the difference between the two latitudes Given this one, if we take with the reference, this is the radius of the earth. This is still earth, radius of the earth. But we said to find latitude, a given latitude is given a name by what extent does it be subtended from the center of with the reference to the equator. If the equator is this part or the circle passing through here and then the, the latitude is for example 20, this 20 degrees south was obtained this way. From the center of the earth we measure 20 degrees with reference to this perpendicular uh, to this radius of the earth This is the earth axis. <coughs> That's the earth axis. Then we measure, we put here our protractor and we measure 20 degrees south of the equator. Then, if we measure 20 degrees south of the equator, we shall find the angle subtended here is 20 degrees. But we say this one, these planes are perpendicular, which means if they are perpendicular to the Earth's axis, then that automatically means that the planes are parallel to each other. And if the planes are parallel to each other, and here is 20 degrees, then that means if this one is R, the radius of the small circle here, then it means the angle subtended here is 20 degrees. Because this plane is parallel to this one, then that automatically means that the angle which is here alternates with the angle at this point. And if it alternates, then that gives us the name of this latitude as 20 degrees south. And this one 30 degrees north, that is how they are measured. So, if we want to find the difference in the angle, this one is on the north, this one is on the south. If we want to find the difference, we take, if they are on the north and this one is south, we do add. We do add. That means we find the sum of the two angles. For instance, if this one is our angle here which we need, the difference between this latitude, that degrees north, and 20 degrees south, then it means we shall take 30 degrees, we add to 20 degrees, and we conclude that the difference between the two latitudes, which is 30 degrees north and 20 degrees south, is 50 degrees. But we can take it in general that We can take it in having a circle like that, uh, our earth, and let that one be our hemisphere, uh, our axis. This is earth axis, and then this is our latitude, zero degrees, meaning that is our equator. And then we have 
our small circle here, let's say it is P. And another small circle here. If this one are the small circles, this is PQRS, with the given angle from the center here, so let's say the angle which is obtained to this one, let's say that one is alpha. This one be beta. That one be gamma, and let's say that is gamma degrees, or say, instead of putting there, we just say, this one is gamma degrees south, and let's even say this one is B, B degrees south, and this one be And this one be A degrees north, and this one C degrees north. If we need the difference between the two angles, that is P and Q, which are located on the both sides, or the same sides of the equator, we shall only take, if the angles are located on the same side of the equator, we do subtract. For example, the difference between P and Q, we shall take the highest one, which is P, uh, that of P minus that of Q, of which will give us, then it will be A degrees, which is on the north, we subtract C degrees, which is on the south. The difference what we find is the difference between the angle of the latitude, which is P, and the difference between the latitude, Q, which are measured from the center of the earth. The same applies to those which are on the uh, south part of the equator. If we need the difference between the two latitudes, that is R and S, we shall take B. If we need the difference between S and R, S and R, we shall now take B minus uh, R, we say this one be gamma, not uh, gamma decrease, B decrease, and we shall find, our answer will be B minus gamma decrease, we shall find what we have there as the measurement given. But if you want to find the measurement of the angle between two latitudes which are on the opposite sides, they are not on the same side of the equator, then we shall add. For instance, the difference between latitude P and latitude R will be given as, latitude P and R will be given as, we find that latitude P is on the north of the equator and latitude R is on the south of the equator. Equator being our reference point, which is zero degrees from the center, then that means that between them will be the angle which is a degrees north, we add to that of the latitude which is degrees south, which is gamma degrees south. And we shall find that the difference between the two angles is a plus gamma degrees. What I do means that we need this difference. For example, if this one is A degrees north, is A degrees from that one, and then this one R is gamma degrees here, we need this total angle. So we shall take this A degrees, we add to gamma 
degrees and we find that is the difference between the two latitudes which are not on the same side of the equator. One is located on the north and another one is located on the south. The same case applies to longitude. Having this one as our longitude and this one as zero degrees, which is the prime meridian or Greenwich, we can say, we can find, we say this one are given decreases with the reference to the prime meridian and the center of the earth. So this one, if it's the prime meridian, and this one is our, for example, longitude A degrees, and this one is B degrees, and then let's say this one is C degrees from from prime meridian then we can say this one is D for example C degrees west and this one is east east so if we need the difference between these two longitude we shall take B degrees subtract A degrees because they are both on east. Both of them are on the same side of the equator. Applies to the, the west ones. If you are being given longitudes which are on the same sides of the prime meridian, then that means that if you need the difference between the two meridians, you have to subtract. Only if they are on the same sides of the prime meridian. But if they are on the opposite side, one is located east and another one is located on the west, then you should find the difference by adding the two meridians together. And here, if we want to find the difference between the meridian D degrees west and the meridian B degrees east, we shall add them. For example, we shall take now the degrees and add, and we shall say that the difference between the meridian D degrees west and B degrees east is located by taking D degrees plus B degrees, and we find the difference between the two meridians. And we can conclude by saying a position of a plane, the earth surface, we said it's given with the reference to two, that is the longitudes and latitudes and it's given in a pair of a latitude being the first position and then longitude on the second position but separated by a comma and put in a bracket for instance we saw how we can find the boot being given a boot here we saw it was on 10 degrees 10 degrees north of the equator and the other given degrees prime meridian Our next subtopic is going to be distances on the surface of the earth, and we shall start with the distance along a great circle. We have seen how to obtain great circles and what are they are. We found that on latitude we only have one great circle, which is the equator, and on longitude we find that every longitude is a great circle. So we shall find distances along these great circles with regard to the, our earth. For instance, if we have this one as our circle path, we found that any of it that cuts the earth into two equal hemispheres is a great circle. And we found that one to be the first one was the equator, and other one was all the prime meridians, all the meridians. Having this one as the meridian, we can now find the distance along these great circles. And for instance, we know one thing. That all the given great circles here, be it this one, this or this one, they are all measured with the reference to the prime meridian here. And the other one 
which is only one great circle, which is known as the equator, we can use also equator or the other prime meridian to deduce distances along the great circle. So we can identify that any circle which its plane is perpendicular to the earth axis and is not a uh, equator, then it's a small circle. But equator and other all meridians are great circles. So we can find that in case this is the prime meridian, which is referred to as which is identified as zero degrees, and we have, for example, let's say this is our earth surface, the center of our earth surface, for instance, and this one be, for example, let this extend here, this degree be zero degrees, uh, be one degree, not zero. Sorry. So let this one, the angle here, be equivalent to, to one degree. We can note that if this angle here, for example, this meridian is one degree east, for example, we can find the distance along this circle here, and it will be along the equator. So if the distance is along the equator, we can say that it is along the great circle. Now, we can find the distance either in nautical mile or in kilometers. With that, we can say that we have travelers such as those who travel using aeroplane and also ship. We find that those people use nautical miles to measure the covered distance, whether by traveling using sea or by air. And here we can say that they approximate that if they travel one degree, we have been told that one degree is equivalent to one traveling 60 nautical miles on the Earth's surface. Nautical miles are the distance covered by one moving on a great circle, any given great circle, may it be a meridian or the equator, any of the great circle by one degree. So we can say that if one degree is equivalent to 60 nautical miles, then that implies that in one degree we have 60 minutes. But we know one degree is equivalent to 60 nautical miles. Then it means that if one degree is having 60 minutes, then it means if we want to find how much that one minute, one minute denoted as one prime, have one prime, which is one minute, is read as one. We need to know if I cover one minute, what distance will I have covered in nautical mile? And we shall find that it will be 60 divided by 60. This is 60 nautical mile divided by 60 minutes. And we find that one gives us one nautical mile. So we can deduce that if I travel on the earth surface along a great circle and I cover one minute, then that means that I will have covered one nautical mile. And one nautical mile, using our standard scale version, we shall find that one nautical mile, this one here, or let me deduce it down here, one nautical mile is equivalent to 1.853 kilometers covered on Earth's surface. So here we are measuring it in nautical mile because this is the standard unit that was agreed internationally that they will be using it to calculate the distance covered and it was given the name nautical mile. And then here we can just derive it in kilometers as part of it and we can see one nautical mile is equivalent to 1.853 kilometers. For instance, we say meridian to another meridian 
by an extent of one degree, it will be at the center of the earth. We are moving along this great circle here, for example. We are moving along this great circle, which is the equator. So the distance along this great circle, now it will be, we have seen, it will be one degree, the difference, and we have found that it will be covering 60 nautical miles, which is equivalent to one, uh, equivalent to one minute, which is one nautical mile, and then we have found it to be in kilometers, is 1.853 kilometers. Otherwise, one can also move along the latitude, but the movement be on the longitude. For example, you may find one moving from a latitude, let's say this is latitude, 30 degrees north, uh, and this one be latitude 20 degrees really doesn't work this one be degrees north so we shall if you are being told that this movement was occurring on this prime meridian it occurred on a prime meridian of zero degrees for example it was from zero degrees we said on giving measurement it will be from zero degrees north uh, zero degrees not zero it will be 30 degrees north. We start with the latitude and then we give the longitude on which the movement takes place to 50 degrees north, 0 degrees longitude. It has no east or west because it's the reference point. Then if we do that way, we shall find that we are moving from this latitude to the other latitude which is the small circles. Let's find what distance can it have covered. And this was 50, so we can deduce it from here. We shall, it moves from, for example, if it's a, a, a cliff or a, that degrees north to 50 degrees north zero degrees so it is moving along this let's find out what distance does this aeroplane moves from this point to the other point but we can discover this that the aeroplane is moving along a great circle this is the prime meridian and it is a great circle only the latitude is changing but the prime meridian remains the same so we can find the difference between the, the latitude and we shall find that the distance between these two latitude is we have find the one is 50 degrees north and another one is 30 degrees uh, north so the difference will be 50 degrees minus 30 and we find the difference is 20 degrees that's the difference in latitude uh, difference in latitude but we say it is moving along a great circle. So meaning, the distance it will be covering, it will be along the great circle. And if it is along the great circle, we have said, if you move one degree, that means you will be have covered 60 nautical miles. And here we have moved from the same prime meridian, but from this point to here, with a difference of 20 degrees. And if one degree covered is 60 nautical miles, then what about 20 degrees? We now deduce this way. We put there 20 degrees. Others say you cross multiply to find how many nautical miles are being covered. So we shall find that it will cover a total of 60 multiplied by 20. And this one gives us 1,200 uh, 1,200 nautical miles. So we can deduce that if we need to find the distance covered along the great circle, in we have find it is 1,200 nautical miles. At the same time, at the same time, 
we can find the distance covered along the great circle in kilometers. And this one can be found this way. We know very well, being deduced that our geographer said the distance or the radius along any great circle of the, the earth is equivalent to 6370 kilometers. That means the radius of the earth is equivalent to 6370 kilometers. So, having this one as the the earth, representing the earth, we can say the distance covered from this point to here, it is a difference in degree a difference in degree of 20 degrees along the great circle and that 20 degrees will be uh, we have the distance along the great circle we find that the distance along the great circle in kilometers we give it as 2 pi r because we are finding the circumference of the great circle the circumference of the great circle and this one what we will find here is the total circle made for example the, if this one is the prime meridian we are finding it the distance along that circle up to the behind part meaning what you will find that if this one this is the earth axis i'm cutting like i'm cutting this one into two we find if we cut here this one be the axis here is also the axis is passing through so i'm cutting only this line and we shall find the first part this first part here is this part we shall find up to here and then the other part which passes through the behind this part and then the other part which is passing through the the other side of the the sphere or the earth it is 180 degrees it is either east or west it is not known but it is the other part that part is this the other part here so we can say that our first latitude here it is on this point for example here and it is 30 degrees and uh, not and then the other latitude which is here it can be at this point which is 50 degrees the north also and the, we shall find this for here because they are all circles going that way so if we find we shall be finding that part but we need the circumference of this all part so we can deduce that the circumference of this great circle from this point as you go the other direction you will find that the circumference is given by 2 pi r 2 pi r is the formula for locating the circumference of any given circle so having this one we can say that to find that circumference we have said we take 2 pi r and 2 pi r here we have 2 and let's say our pi to be 22 over 7 then we multiply by the radius of the earth which is 6370 kilometers and if we do that one we are going to get you are going to get an approximation of 40,040 40, kilometers and that is the total distance covered when you move along this great circle which is this one from distance from this part as you move along that great circle so we are finding the circumference being 40,040 kilometers. But we need the distance covered from this point to this one, which is an angle, if we subtend to the center, we are finding it's an angle of 20 degrees. Because the difference between the two latitudes is 20 degrees. How is that measured? We have taken from the center of the earth to that latitude, and then to the other latitude, if we find the difference, we are getting is 20 degrees. And if we measure that one, we are finding this one. But we have found that the distance along the great circle, total of it, it is 40,040. What about this small 20 degrees? And this, this 40,040 kilometers, we are taking to be 360 degrees. 
because it's the distance or the circumference of the total circle. So that one is equivalent to 40,040 kilometers. What about what we have and that is 20 degrees? So we shall find that we have to cross multiply and we say that it will be equivalent to now I can wrap here and we use this part. That one is equivalent to 40,040 kilometers multiplied by 20 degrees over 360 degrees and this one reduces us to we are finding it to be 2,220 4.44 kilometers to two decimal places. And that is the distance covered from this point to that one along that great circle. That means if the aeroplane is moving from this part to the other part, then we are finding the distance covered along this great circle, which is the prime meridian, is 2,224.44 kilometers. In other words, we have gone along methods of finding that one, and we can use a simple method by saying that if the angle subtended from the center to that meridian is 20 degrees, and let this one be an angle theta, then we can find the, the distance along that great circle with referring to this theta as theta over 360 degrees to pi r instead of going through the tedious work and we shall find that if we do this one it will give us 20 over 360 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 22 over 7 multiplied by the radius this should be capital r and we shall find this one is 6370 kilometers uh, arising to gives us the same answer we are getting 2224 Point four four kilometers. So what does that imply? Instead of going through the, the tedious work, you should only find the difference between the two angles. After finding the difference between two angles and identify on which the movement takes place, on which longitude or on which circle does the movement take place. If it is the great circle, like this one, you identify. Then you use this formula and you will find it is the quickest method of finding the distance in kilometers along this great circle. Now we have found in how we can find the distance along the great circle in nautical miles and also in kilometers. In other words, I would like to just identify the shortcut to find those two. And we can say if you are finding the distance along the great circle in kilometers, then you should find the angle theta, which is the difference between the two angles on a great circle then it should be over 360 degrees because the total circle is 360 degrees this theta is only a section on which you need to find that circumference then you multiply by 2 pi r whereby this r is normally the radius of the earth this one will give you the distance in kilometer. And if it is in nautical mile, we say that one degree along the great circle will have cost you to move 16 nautical miles along that great circle. And we said if we have 20 degrees, we saw it is giving us 1,200 nautical miles. In that, we can say that if we needed to find the total distance covered along the great circle in nautical mile, we shall take the given angle, for our instance was 20 degrees, then you multiply by the total nautical mile, because the total nautical mile covered in 1 degree 16 nautical mile. So if you do this way, you will be finding distance in nautical mile. And that is how we find the distance along the great circle, either in kilometers or in nautical mile. Now let's find the distance along a small.
circle is here. If this one is our radius, let's take this one to be zero degrees, and this one is the center of the earth, for instance. Then we shall find that if an axis cuts the earth through that point, we are finding this plane of this uh, equator, uh, the equator, we are finding it to be perpendicular to the earth's axis. But we can find, we said we can find the latitude, which is this one, which is parallel to the equator, by measuring a certain angle from, from the plane of the equator. So if we do that one, if we measure this angle with the reference to the equator, the plane of the equator and the earth axis, we shall find, we will find this angle like, for example, it is theta. Said since this plane is perpendicular to the equator, then that means that the angle here formed, it will be equivalent to the angle of here. Let's see how that happens. For instance, we are going to draw this point here. Let's take this one. This is the plane of the small circle which we need to find. And this is uh, the plane of the, the, the equator. So this is the plane of the latitude with the radius r. And this is radius r, which is the same as that one. So on deduction, we say, if we draw, we cut that point this way. I'm going to cut this way and draw it back. And we see what we will find. I'm going to cut this one in this direction. And we need to identify what we will find there. And we shall find something of this sort. We are finding something of that sort. Whereby this is R, the radius of the earth. And this one we are deducing as a theta from the diagram. And we are finding that the other one, this one is R, the radius of the smaller circle. From that one we can deduce that this one we say this plane is perpendicular to the equator's plane. So if it is so, then it means if this angle is theta, then this one automatically will be theta because the two angles are alternating. They are alternating because this is a parallel. This is parallel to this parallel to R, capital R. So, meaning the radius of the smaller circle is parallel to the radius of the larger circle. If we do that when we know this one makes perpendicular with the earth's axis, because we said the planes of the latitudes always are perpendicular to the earth's axis. So, that is a right angle triangle. A uh, right angle triangle, this one we can deduce. And we can say, if we need to find this one, if we have here theta as r, we have seen that if that one is r, the distance from this point to that point is the same distance from there to there. And that is the distance of the radius of the r. Whereby, I'm denoting it as here. If you move from this point of the earth, from the center of the earth to the earth's surface at that point, it's the same as moving from the center of the earth to the other surface of the other latitude. And that one distance, that distance is referred to as the radius of the earth. So here we can denote that this one, they are still the same. So if we need to find R, for instance, we can say, let's assume we don't have R, but we have this angle theta, we have this one as our right angle triangle, and we have this side. So the relationship between this angle, which is on the hypotenuse, we are finding a triangle. We are going to find a triangle of this part, this time. We are finding this one is theta. This is, let's say that one is not referred to us right now because we need to find it. And then we have this one as R. 
So in case we need this one, we are finding this, this side from this point to here, it is adjacent to the angle theta. If it is adjacent to the angle theta, then we shall use the cosine rule. So we say that if we take the cos of that angle, cos of that angle is the same as the adjacent side of that angle, which we don't have over the hypotenuse, which is there, R. So we find that the adjacent of that angle, we said it is small r. So let me substitute that small r. So we find it to be this way. And if we make the small r as our subject, we shall find that we are getting small r to be r cos theta. So wherever we have the small r, we can replace it by using the capital R, which is the radius of the earth, with the angle on which that latitude is subtended from the center of the earth with reference to the equator. So we can deduce some of the distances we can move, so we have find what R can be represented with. In case we can still find the distance along this great circle, uh, these small circles, I mean, in nautical miles and in kilometers. And here we shall have to handle it in a different way. For example, you can be asked, find the distance in nautical miles and in kilometers between 30 degrees. Let's write first. We have 30 degrees north, uh, 45 degrees east, and And 30 degrees north, this one was Q. Now let's take B and, and B. B is 30 degrees north and 60 degrees west. We need to find the distance in nautical miles and in kilometers. The first thing we should understand here is, does the distance take place on great circle? or any small circle. Here, we are obtaining that it is small circles which is constant. There is no change in small circles. So the change is on great circles, which is the longitude. And if we have the change on longitudes, we can deduce it on a diagram by drawing, if this one is zero degrees, our prime meridian, and this one, let's say this one is our equator, zero degrees, and this is our latitude, which is 30 degrees north. We can find that if we have been given, the first one is 45 degrees east. 45 degrees east, let us be deduced that it is at this point. Here, this is longitude, 45 degrees east. So if it's 45 degrees, then means, then it means that that point is our point Q. And if we have 30 degrees north and 60 degrees west, sorry, this is degrees, so that one, let's say it passes through this point, so we find that it will be here. So if this one is longitude 60 degrees west of the prime meridian, and this one 45, we can deduce that this point is our point P. I on, on of viewing this, we can say that we are only moving from, we moved first from Q, which is here, to P, which is on the west part. So if we move from Q, we move on this circle to P, which is on the west, this way. Maybe it's not being well viewed. We are moving here, along that point. To find the distance covered by this part. And if this one is a small circle, then its radius is r, which is the same as this r, because it's still the radius. So, we want to find the substantion of this angle. What angle does it substand here? And we shall see that the angle substanded here, it is the difference between the two the two meridians. And the two meridians, we find that the first one is 45 degrees east. It is on the east of the meridian, or the prime meridian, 
and this one is on the west. So we shall find the difference between the two meridians. And the difference between the two meridians, we are having 45 degrees plus 60 degrees, because we say those which are found on different parts of the meridian, we should add them. And if we had 45 to 60, we are getting the difference in meridian, we are having 105 degrees. So that is the angle subtended here, 105 degrees. And if we do that way, we can now find the distance along this one. And if we find the distance, we are seeing the distance will be moving along a small circle. So if it is along the small circle, the first thing we should note here is this. This angle substantive here is a longitudinal angle. So we shall refer to this our angle as alpha. Let it be alpha because it's a longitudinal angle. And then the angle substantive by this arc, for example, if this one we have said this is the equator, we will find if this one is the center of the earth, then the angle substantive here we found it is this 30 degrees. So we still have that angle. So we need to find the distance along this small circle. And we can deduce that from the previous formula we said if we needed to find the distance along the great circle, we said we shall take the theta was theta multiplied by 60 nutical miles. Thank you, remember? Now, to find the distance along the small circle, we shall take R over capital R because it is on the small on the small circle. Then we multiply it by 60 nutical miles. This one will give our distance in nutical miles. But we found out that our R here was equivalent to our R was, but our R was capital R cos theta, our small r. So the radius of the small circle, we find it to be the radius of the circle multiplied by the angle which it is subtended from the center of the earth, the, earth, the center of the earth with reference to equator. So if it's that the case, then let's replace this r by r cos theta. We are finding that we will have r cos theta over r is equivalent to 60 nutical miles. But we are seeing that this R can cancel with this R not by not equal. We shall multiply. Sorry. So if we multiply, we shall be finding that distance. So we are finding that this R and this one simplifies and we are remaining with the cos theta multiplied by sixty nutical miles. So in conclusion, we can say that if we want to find the distance in nutical miles along the small circle, then we shall take 60 nutical miles, sub, which is of 1 degree subtended along the great circle, multiplied by cos theta, which now we shall be finding along the small circle. So if we do that one, we shall be finding the distance moved along the small circle with reference to the angle. The angle. Then, there is another additional information. That one was without change in degrees. Additional information here is that here we have found there is a change in longitude. There is a change in longitude of 105 degrees. So the distance which will be have moved this is a longitudinal distance, and we said it is alpha. So if this one is cos theta, uh, cos theta multiplied by that, that one, just to find the distance moved along this small circle without changing degree, if there is a change in degree along the longitudinal, then we shall add that change. And if we add that change, it will be, we said initially it is theta multiplied by uh, 60 newton mile. But here, this one we have found, in order to do it on great circle, we are replacing it with the, the other part. This one is a replacement. 
So if we replace, we shall find that our theta here will be now be rep represented by alpha. So it will be alpha, then you multiply by what you have here. 60 newton mile cos theta. Whereby this theta is the angle subtended from the center of the earth with the reference to equator to the latitude on which you are moving. And this alpha is the difference between the longitudinal the longitudes which you are being given or provided with. So for our instance, if we need to find the distance along the small circle here with a longitudinal difference of 105, now we shall take that 105. So having this 105 degrees, we can now find the distance in Newton mile along this small circle here. And we shall see, we have find it will be alpha cos theta 60 Newton mile. We multiply. So our alpha here is 105 degrees cos theta. We say the angle subtended from the center of the earth to that latitude is 30. Then we multiply by 60, 60 Newton miles. The first 105 we say the longitudinal difference. So if we multiply that way, we are going to get my calculator is giving me 5,455.96 Newton mile on based on calculation which I have done. I'm getting that one as the distance along this one in Newton miles. But we can still find the distance along this small circle in kilometers. Let's find the distance along it in kilometers. So initially we said the distance along the great circles, we said it should be theta in case we have a, we have that an angle extended. So it will be theta over 360, uh, 2 pi r, whereby this r was the radius of the earth. But along the small circle, we shall now deduce it as alpha over 360, then 2 pi r. But here, no what? This alpha here, alpha is implying that alpha implies the longitudinal change. longitudinal change in degree and here r we said our small r is being represented by r cos theta so we can substitute our equation here using the two given things for example here our alpha we found it to be 105 degrees so it will be 105 over 360 multiplied by 2 multiplied by pi which is 22 over 7 for our case multiplied by r we have said it will be r cos theta capital r and capital r we know the radius of the earth is 6370 kilometers multiplied by cos theta now theta is the angle being subtended here from the earth of, of the earth reference to equator to that latitude i should add it here actually Theta equals to latitudinal change. The distance from the equator, the degree change of the equator, with the reference to equator, that latitude, that way. So, cos that. Then let's do that and find out what do we get. I'm getting an approximate return of 10,113.73 kilometers. That is an approximation of what I am getting here.
So we have deduced how to find that distance along the small circle and also in kilometers and in new, in Newtico miles. Here is in kilometers and we also saw how we find it in Newtico miles. In general, that one is in general. For distances on the surface of the earth, we can say if it is along the great circle, if you are finding it in Newtico miles, then it means you will just only take theta, you multiply by by 60 Newtico miles. This theta which is whereby theta equals to angle. This is angle difference. On that great circle, normally on either equator, normally on the equator, or it may be between the small circles, but on a given longitude. Then in kilometers, we do take the angle difference, the same, our 360 multiplied by 2 pi r, whereby this r equals to radius of the earth. And this one is normally 6,370 kilometers. That is on the great circle. Now, on small circles, we have seen distance on small circles in Newtico mile, we said we shall take alpha multiplied by cos theta, then we multiply by 60 Newtico mile. Whereby this alpha is now the longitudinal change in degree and theta here represents theta here is the latitude on which it lies change your curve and then here we have say the other ones and then in kilometers the same applies we have alpha over 360 multiplied by 2 pi 2 pi r whereby r equals to r cos theta so if we deduce that one this one implies it will be alpha over 360 2 pi r cos theta and we know this one is the same as the upper right there. That's how we calculate distances along the grid and small circles. We are now going to see or to look about the shortest distance between two points on the Earth's surface. We shall consider one of the examples and we view which distance is the longest as we travel on the Earth's surface or is it along the great circle or along the small circle. Let's see. For example, we shall be given an example here, and we are being told that P and Q are two points on a latitude 50 degrees north. P and Q are two points on a latitude 50 degrees north. They lie on longitude 48 degrees west and 132 degrees east. Find the distance from P to Q along a parallel of latitude and also along a great circle. What we should denote here is this. Let's denote P first and we have been told both of them are on the same latitude. That is on latitude 50 degrees north. So given the position of the two points, we shall start with the P which is 50 degrees north and it is on longitude 48 degrees west of the prime meridian and then we have another one which is q and that q is also on 50 degrees north and also it is on 132 degrees east of the prime meridian and then we have been told to find the distance along the parallel of the latitude and also to find the distance along, along the great circle. Let's see. 
Now you have to identify which one is variable. Is it the longitude or the latitude? And if we identify, we'll find by drawing that sphere, here is a circle, but let's assume it's a sphere. Then this is our prime meridian. This is our equator. And then we identify this latitude which we have been told is 50 degrees north. And also we identify the longitudes. For example, the line P we have been told. The P line is here. This is P and this is 48 degrees west. And then we have another one which passes through that point. And this one we have been identified as Q. And this latitude is 132 degrees east of the prime meridian. So we need to find the distance between the two on parallel of the latitude. Parallel of the latitude they are referring to as the small circle. That is on 50 degrees north latitude along this point. We need to find it along here. That is what they are meaning with the parallel of the latitude. So if it is along the parallel of latitude, what do we do? Let's find this distance in kilometers. And if we find in kilometers, we say the small r is represented by, in our previous session, we said small r is represented by r cos theta, whereby r, we said, is the radius of the earth. And in this case, we shall now find the longitudinal difference between the two. And let's say this one is the small r. And that is the parallel of the latitude. We are talking about latitude 50 degrees north. And this is the longitudinal difference. And here the longitudinal difference, we shall find it by this way. We are seeing one is on the west of the prime meridian, another one is in the east of the prime meridian. So the difference between the two longitudes, we do add. That is 132 plus 48, and this one is giving us 180 degrees. That is our difference in degree. So we are finding this one is subtended here by 180 degrees. So we can now find the distance along the, this one now we are referring to this one as alpha. Remember in our previous session how we refer to them. The longitudinal change, we say let it be referred to as alpha to avoid the confusion between the theta we are using, the uh, different degree in latitude and also in longitude. So we shall use alpha to represent the longitudinal change and theta to represent the latitudinal change. So on that note, we will find the distance along the parallel of latitude and we say it is alpha over 362 uh, pi r. But r, we say is capital R cos theta. So it will be capital R cos theta to represent the small r. So if we do that, we are having 108 over 360 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 22 over 7 by r the radius of the earth is normally 6,370 kilometers approximated by the geographers. So we shall use 6,370 kilometers as the radius of the earth. And then we multiply by cos. Then this theta is the, the degree on which the latitude we are using is located on, which is 50. That means it is extended or subtended from the center of the earth with reference to the equator by 50 degrees. So we are multiplied by cos 50. And this one gives us We are getting 12,868.61 kilometers to two decimal places. 
we have found the distance along that one, uh, along the parallel of latitude, as that one. Now let's find the distance along the great circle. First, we can view it as this way. We see that if this one is the center of the earth, we are referring this one to, to be the reference point, the prime meridian. Then, if that one is the, the, the perpendicular plane, which is this one, we always assign every longitude the degree with reference to the prime meridian, but we use it with reference to the center of the earth, which is the perpendicular plane of the equator to the earth's axis. So, if it's that way, then it means if we assign, we know that one is 48 degrees, not 48, it's 50 actually, it is subsumed upwards by 50, from this plane to the other one, it's having a degree of 50, and the other one we have seen is 50. So, it gives us something of this sort, that if we have that one, it's a semicircle drawn up, it is this way, and then if this one is the center of the earth, as here is located, so we are moving with the angle substantiated with the latitude, which is on the other side, so not there, but it is the here. So we are finding that one is 50, or the other way, so we are finding to that latitude is 50 degrees, and to the other latitude is also 50 degrees. So the only remaining latitude here, the only remaining to fill up that semicircle up here, this angle now, it will be 50 plus 50. So we shall take the whole of this one is measuring 180 degrees, because all angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. So we subtract the 250, the 250 angles, and we shall get 80 degrees. So that means here is 80 degrees. What is that 80 degrees representing? We found that the angle, the latitude 50 degrees, is subtended from the center of the earth by 50 degrees. But it is on both sides because it's a small circle. So on this side to that one is 50 degrees, and on the other side is also 50. So only giving us the center angle to be. 80 degrees, and this 80 degrees is subtending the angle which you can use to pass along the great circle, which is from the north, passing through the North Pole. This North Pole is what I'm talking about. This part is now the other part. You, the movement along this now great circle here, and it is 80 degrees. So if it is the 80 degrees and it's our great circle, we said the distance to find the formula for finding the distance along the great circle, we said in our earlier section is theta over 360 to pi r, whereby our r here is the radius of the earth. So if we do that way, we are finding that our theta is 80 over 360 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 22 over 7 multiplied by our r, and R here is 6, uh, 6,370, and it's giving us approximately of 8,000. It's giving us an approximate of 8,897. .78 kilometers. It is in kilometers, actually. So, the answer is in kilometers. And let's refer. We have found that the distance of moving from this point to this one along the small circle, so this one, the other one is, was not that way, but actually was the distance from this point, then back to that point. So we are finding to be 8,897.78 kilometers. And we can see that if one moves from this point to the other point using the parallel of latitude, 
is covering 12,868.61 kilometers. But if he uses this one from this point to back to the other point using the great circle that is from passing through the North Pole, he will cover 8,897.78 kilometers. And that is the distance along the great circle. This is the distance along the small circle, also referred to as the parallels of latitude. And if you compare the two results, you will find that if you move along the great circle, you will cover a shorter distance than moving on a great circle, moving on a small circle. So that implies that the distance covered on a small circle are always greater than those covered along the great, at the great circle. We are going today to analyze longitudes and time, and we see how time varies with variation in longitudes. And we can say that Earth always moves from west to east, and on this movement, it is rotating on Earth on its own axis in every 24 hours. Those places which are always on the east of the prime meridian experience sunrise before those which are on the west of the prime meridian. So that indicates that the places on the longitudes which are ahead or east of the prime meridian are always ahead in time referred to the Greenwich or the prime meridian. And those which are which have the longitudes which are behind or west of the prime meridian experiences late time compared to those on the east of the prime meridian. And with that we can say that if we have our earth and this one on the west, then those on the west or on the west of the prime meridian are always behind in time compared to those on the east of the prime meridian. And in other words, we can also deduce that that all the places located on the prime meridian or on the Greenwich meridian have the same local time. In fact, all the places on the same longitude have the same local time. But those on the Greenwich, Greenwich or the Prime Meridian, their local time is always known as, the time, local time on this one is known as GMT, which is referred to as Greenwich, Greenwich mean time. That is the local time located on the Greenwich Meridian or on the Prime Meridian. And then we can also denote that if you want to find the time in east or any place on the east of the prime meridian, then it will be ahead. And in that regard, if you have two meridians on the east of two meridians on the east of the Greenwich Meridian, for example, let's for instance take this one. And let's say this one to be Let's say that one, if this one is the earth, uh, the axis, the equator, and that meridian B may be, be subtended, for example, with one degree. If it is subtended by one degree, we can now denote that if you move one degree from one longitude to another longitude, which is one degree east, of the prime meridian, then that means you will have moved four minutes ahead of the Greenwich. If, for example, someone moves one degree east of the prime meridian, if this is the center of the earth, and then that person moves, for example, with one degree, let this one be one degree, then we shall say that he will have covered four minutes, or he will have gained a time of four minutes on the green which means time. But if that person moves with another degree west of the prime meridian, for example, from that point to here, let it also be one degree, we shall find that that person will have lost time if moves to the west. 
this is to the east, but if it is to west and moves with one degree, then that person will have lost four minutes. This is four minutes loss, and this one is four minutes gain to east. Gain to east, and then this one is lost to west. If you move one degree to the west of the green, which means time, you will be losing four minutes per every degree you move. But if you move one degree to the east of the green, which means time, you will be gaining four minutes as you move to the east. So that implies that if someone moves 15 degrees from one longitude to another, then he or she will have gained or lost one hour compared one hour regarding to which direction the person moves to. If moves to the west with the 15 degree longitudinal change, then that person will have lost one full hour. But if that person moves 15 degree east of the longitude is located to, then that person will have gained one more hour. Then we now need to identify or see how we may calculate time with variation to longitudes. Let's see an example. The local time of A, which is 0 degrees, 170, 170 degrees east, is 12.30 a.m. The local time of 0 degrees, 170 degrees east is 12.30. Local time here, local time is 12.30 a.m. 12.30 a.m. And then we are being informed that it is on Monday. It is on Monday. So find the local time of a point B. <coughs> B, B, that is point B, is 0 degrees, 170 degrees west. Actually, it's a total, total longitudinal change since the same longitude but in the opposite plane. So it will be that way. So we need to find the local time here. And that is what we don't know. We need to find. So the first thing we should do is we identify this person is first or, or we take the observer to be the first observer to be at longitude 170 degrees east. Since the two are taking on the same latitude, which is the equator, then we can deduce that if, for example, this one, this is the equator, this is the prime meridian, let's take this is the extreme end of the earth, which we take is at to be 170 degrees east, and this one to be another extreme end of the earth, to be 170 degrees west. And this one will be referring to as A, and this one is point B. If that way, then it means we can locate the difference in their degree by doing what? By finding the sum. This is not an angle, it is an angle which is extremely, actually is not that way. But I can cut this point and we see this is the equator. This is zero degrees. I'm cutting this plane here. I need it to be well viewed. So I'm cutting this plane, the equator plane, which is zero degrees. Then I have to plot this angle here, uh, the first longitude, which is this one. Let's take this there, which is 170 degrees east. And then we move along the same plane, we move along the same plane until we come back to here. We come, for example, back to there, which is on this part now, and it's 170 degrees west. So we move this direction.
we have found there is a difference of 10 hours, 10 minutes. And that is on Sunday now. So we have found up to midnight. This is midnight and this midnight is on Monday. We want to go back again by 10 hours, 10 minutes. And if we go back again, we shall be going on to Sunday. So, zero, 00 hours, it is midnight. And midnight, it either can be this one, be written this way on Monday, or if we go back to Sunday, it is 24.00 zero, zero hours. It can either be written this way or be written the other way. It depends on which system you use. But if you write this way, it means only you have covered 24 hours in a total day, of which this one will be representing Sunday, and this one is representing a new day, which is Monday. So if it's this way, we now need to subtract 10 hours, 10 minutes. 10 hours, 10 minutes. If we subtract that, from 24 hours we shall find first year we don't have so it's 60 minutes so if we subtract we are going to get 50 minutes and here if we subtract 23 you subtract 10 you are going to get 13 so it is 1350 hours so let's just say yeah 1350 hours if this one was minutes So we are going to get 1350 hours, but this is on Sunday. So it means the local time at this point, it is or it is, if you subtract 12 to make it a 12 hour system, it is 1.50 p.m. That is the local time at 170 degrees west. That's what we are finding. So that implies that if you need to find time difference or time to a given longitude, we need to play with the longitudes, how they vary from one point to another. And that is how we find it. And under speed, we are going to look at how we can find this. If we move a given distance in nautical miles per hour, we need to see how we can obtain that speed and also how we can obtain speed if we move a given distance regarding to kilometers. So, we can identify that if you move along the surface of the earth in nautical miles with the given number of hours, then we shall see that if you move in nautical miles, it will give us and nautical miles per hour of which this one is referred to as knots and it's normally used by sailors and those who drive or drive aeroplanes, yeah, they are pilots and sailors they one in their movement and we can also move regarding to kilometers and we can say if we move this one in kilometers we shall find we move it in kilometers per hour if the distance is given in kilometers we can move it in kilometers per hour or meters per second but if it is in nautical miles per hour then that is not we can see one of the examples whereby we have been told a ship leaves mombasa 45 deg 4 degrees south and 39 degrees east a ship leaves mombasa let's say from Mombasa, it is 4 degrees south, then 39 degrees east, uh, to what? And sails due east. It is sailing due east for 98 hours to a point K, which is 4 degrees south and 80 degrees east in the Indian Ocean. Calculate its average speed in kilometers per hour and knots. So this one is moving to a point K which is 4 degrees south and 80 degrees east
So we need to calculate this one. Oh, it moves. All of this one is moved in 98 hours. So we needed to calculate the speed in nautical miles per hour, which is equivalent to knots, and also to calculate in kilometers per hour. What we shall do here firstly, we are going to find the difference in degree, either in longitude or latitude by identification. So here we identify that they are moving on the same latitude. So if it is the same latitude, we shall find this way. If this is our earth, for example, if this one is our earth, then we shall find this is longitude 0 degrees, and we have a latitude of 4 degrees south. If this one is the equator, we have another latitude here. This one is 4 degrees south, this is 0 degrees, and we have 39 degrees east, Mm -hmm. uh, that is and we have another one, 80 degrees west. 80 degrees west. So, we are seeing that that airplane is moving from this point to that one. So, it's moving from that point here along this one to this point. So, we can say, as we view, it is along the latitude 4 degrees south. And if it is along the latitude 4 degrees south, it's along the latitude or the parallel of latitude. That is a small circle. It's not a great circle. Because it is moving on the... The, 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 the longitudinal change is along 4 degrees south, which is a latitude of 4 degrees south. So, we can identify that if we want to find distance in nautical mile along the latitude, a small circle, we said it is alpha multiplied by cos theta multiplied by 60 nautical mile per that is 60 nautical mile that's the distance covered in nautical mile along the small circle whereby the alpha was representing the longitudinal change and theta was the angle subtended from the center of the earth with the reference to the equator to the latitude which we are on it so this one, if that was the case, then we need to find the alpha and we shall say that alpha is given by the degree is one is on the east, another one is on the west. So if we want to find the difference in degree, for example, if this is the earth center, so from there to that point, or the other one we say it is four, with the reference to this, that is four degrees. But we have this one with the center at this point, and from there to here, we needed to find this angle. Whereby this one is 39 degrees east, and this one is 80 degrees west. So that angle is located by taking 80 degrees uh, plus 39 degrees east. So if you add, we are adding because they are located on two different parts of the prime meridian. That is one is on the east, another one is on the west. So to find the difference, we have to add. And if we add the two, we are going to get 119. We are getting 119 degrees. What that does imply? This implies that the difference in the angle here 19 degrees and that is our alpha so if we have obtained our alpha as 119 degrees then we have to multiply by cos theta and cos theta we say theta is the angle extended or subtended by the that latitude which is four degrees now from the center of the earth with reference to equator so it is four multiply by cos multiply by 60 nautical mile and we shall get our answers We are going to get 7,122.61 nautical miles.
So we were told to calculate our speed of movement in nautical miles per hour, which is also known as knots. So we shall say speed is always distance given or taken divided by time. And this one is also found using this one is 7122.61 byte by we were told it it sailed or it was the aeroplane a ship it sailed for 98 total hours so we divide by 98 And we are going to find 72.6, approximately here to 72.68, 72.68 knots. Why not? It is not the mass writing in Utico. That's why we are getting 72.68 knots. But in kilometer, that is giving it in knots. In kilometers, we have to find the other way around. Remember we said, finding distance along the small circle in kilometer, said we shall take alpha over 360, where alpha is the longitudinal change between the two longitudes, and then we multiply by 2 pi, R, but our small r was represented by capital R cos theta. And this one, you know, theta is the angle on which it is subtended, or the latitude which we are referring to is subtended from the center of the earth with reference to equator. So if we do that way, we shall find our alpha was 119, our 360, multiplied by 2 by 22 over 7 as our pi, multiplied by the radius of the earth is always 6,370 unless you have been given otherwise multiply by cos 4 whereby theta is 4 here so if we do that way we are going to find We are finding this one to be 13,203.20 kilometers. If we need the distance in kilometers per hour, we have to take this distance. Uh, speed is equal to distance taken over time taken. Distance travel over time taken, of which in now 13,203.20 kilometers, divided by the total time taken is 98 hours, and this one is going to give us none but, it will give us 134.73 kilometers per hour in two decimal places. So, we can view the first thing, if you have been told to calculate the time taken or the speed, if you have been told to calculate the speed traveled by aircraft or ship or anyone on the earth's surface by given, being given difference in longitude or latitude, you first have to identify on which direction are you going to calculate it. Is it along the great circle or is it along the small circle as for this case. If it is along the small circle, you used to you need to use what is pertained to a small circle. And if it is along the great circle, you also need the formulas for getting the distance travel along the great circle. And then from there you use the given hours or given time to locate the speed you need.